This is part six of the video series, how to code guess a number. Now we're finally, everything has been established. You set up all your forms, you've set up all the templates, the simple coding for menu strips. You, you already watched video part five. Today, the green button, the guess button. What happens here? So I double click. Going through, I put as many comments as I could to help you out. So immediately after you press the guess button, add their guess to the list box. List guesses, that's an L, not a one. List guesses dot items dot add parentheses text answer dot text. What's going on there is after you type a number here, you press this button, it will push it over there. It will add it to the guest boxes. So it'll take anything from this text answer box and put it there. After that, make one of the footballs disappear. Obviously, if it's their first guess, I want the first football to disappear. This is going to happen. This works successfully because I already have my variable defined from the fifth video, and I set up the array from the fifth video. If you did those two steps, then this will work successfully. Fball num, which is the name of my variable, football number, num guesses, remember, I'm on the zero guess. Num guesses is the counter. What guess am I on? It starts with zero. Z so the zero ball, visible false. What is the zero ball? Well, it's this one. This is zero, one, two, three, four. Computers start counting with zero. So the zero is pick football. Which one is pick football? It's this one. So this one disappears first. So when my guesses is zero, this one disappears first. When my guesses is one, this one disappears second. So that's what happens there. Counter to keep track of guesses num guesses equals num guesses plus one. You've used that before. You've used a counter. But basically, okay, if it was my zero guess, now it's my first guess. If it was my first guess, now it's my second guess. If it was my second guess, now it's my third guess. So it just increments your counter by one. So it moves on to the next one. This next if statement, this decision structure here, are you within the limits of your game? My game is between one and a hundred. If they're not playing between 1 and 100, obviously I'm going to let them know something before you even move on to high or low. If your guess is greater than 100, you get a message box, guess within the limits, VB exclamation, pay attention, clear the text box, put the focus, meaning put the cursor back in the text box, go to check game. This is a little subroutine, check game. I want to know if they're at the end of their guesses. So go to check game is at the very bottom down here at the end of my guess button. Check game. This code checks to see how many guesses you have made. If it is your fifth guess, then game over. If num guesses is five, then message box game over. Too bad. I make the green guess button visible false. I make the reset or the play again button visible true. So I have to go through that every time they make a guess. Basically, I want to know, are they allowed to continue? Else if they make a guess less than one, like they put zero or they typed a letter, then guess within the limits, empty, this empties the text box, parentheses, parentheses, or quote, quote, empties the text box, puts the cursor back in there. So again, when I press play, if I take... 45, or I type the letter R, guess within the limits, pay attention, it emptied my text box, and it put the cursor back in there. That's what's going on there. If they are playing within the limits, then you allow them to continue. This code checks your guess. If the value of their text box so you take the value. So you can do numerical comparisons. You need to do a VAL for value. So if I type 45, the value of 45 is 45, is greater than the correct num. What did the computer pick? If 
it's greater than the random number the computer picked, your guess is too high is added to the label or the text box on the bottom. Empty it and put the cursor back in there. Otherwise, if you're too low, you're less than the number the computer picked, then you say too low, empty it and put the cursor back in the text box. Else, you must have won. If you didn't guess too high, if you didn't guess too low, there's only other one choice that you guessed right. Else, form win.show. That's going to take me to the winning form. Close this form, exit sub. You won. So you don't have to move on. And it will go to this as well. It'll go to the check game. So when I press play, the right number is 71. Let me guess 34. Guess 34 down here. 34 is too low. Cursor's in here. One of the balls disappeared. Let me guess 78. 78 is too high. Obviously, it's bigger than 71. Goes in there, clears it out, puts the cursor in there. Another ball disappeared. If I guess right, 71. I go to the winning form, and I haven't talked about that yet. So that, in essence, is your green button. All the coding required for the guess form. In addition, the last thing, I forgot, text boxes. You can put a maximum length. Notice, one of the properties, 3 meaning they can't type anything more than that, even if they tried. 100. I can't type anything more than that. I put a maximum length. So you can do that too, especially if you have a smaller range, maybe between 10 and 50. Only allow them to put type in two characters. Hopefully that helps you out with the green guess button. We'll... The next videos will talk about the play again button and some other advanced features, including how to code the winning form. Good luck.